Hello everyone, welcome to Leak Code. Notice I didn't say Leak Code Live. If you're watching this video, this is actually a pre-recorded video that I filmed on September 26. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm on vacation right now and I don't wanna have to deal with Leak Code on vacation. When you're on vacation, you, you should disconnect from everything that you're doing so you can make sure that you get ample rest so when you come back, you feel recharged and just ready to go. And I also want to make sure that my viewers are not left with any content during the time that I'm out. So I'm going to be recording these every single day for every single day that I'm out. And as far as you know, it's going to be transparent to you. You're not really going to notice any difference. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to keep these fairly short. Now, you know, sometimes I do streams that are longer. Sometimes I do videos that are shorter. The main thing is I want, you know, my channel's always been directed more towards beginners and people that are looking to hold themselves accountable. If I make streams that are too long, I think it's very difficult for people to stick with, with that. If I do videos that are 30 to minutes to an hour long, I think that's very easy to accommodate. So for these recorded, pre-recorded videos, I'm gonna be making these around half an hour long. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. The first question we're gonna look at today is called the minimum of time, minimum amount of time to fill cups. It's telling us that we have a water dispenser that can dispense cold, warm, and hot water. Every second you can either fill up two cups with different types of water or one cup of any type of water. You're given a zero index integer array amount. You're given a zero index integer array amount of lane three or amount zero, amount one, and amount two, denote the number of cold, warm, and hot water cups you need to fill respectively. Return the minimum number of seconds needed to fill up all the cups. So it's telling us that every second you can either fill up two cups with different types of water or one cup of any type of water. One way to fill up the cup is second one, fill up the cold cup and warm cup. Second two, fill up a warm cup and a hot cup. Second three, fill up a warm cup and a hot cup. And then second four, fill up a warm cup. It can be proven that four is the minimum number of seconds needed. Now, what does it say here? So you're given a zero index length where this and this denote the number of cold, warm, and hot water cups you need to fill respectively. So we need to fill warm four times, hot twice, and cold once. Let's think about this. So five, four, four, fill up a cold cup and a hot cup, fill up a cold cup and a warm cup. Let's see, different types of water or one cup of any type of water. Interesting. So, I mean, it's kind of like the, the way that I see this, we have like a one, let me see, we have a one, a four and a two. And I think really the question is like, how quickly can we get every single number down to zero? We can sort of subtract one every single time. I can do like, I can subtract one here. Now, if it says fill up all the cups, okay, so I can also do like, I can make this three and one. I mean, should I always take, should I always take the option of filling in uh, two at the same time until I no longer can? And what I mean by that is like here, for example, I can only fill up twice once, right? Like I can do a zero. And let's say I, I'll pick the next largest one, which is like this one. Or rather, I think I should always try to do multiple until I only have one that's a single. Does that make sense? So I can do like zero and one here. That's that's one second. Here I can do zero and three. That's two seconds. And then this will just be three. So is it four? Let's see. One way to fill up the cups is... Okay, so that's actually, so there might be a better way. I think last time I did two first. What if here I did zero and three? Okay, that's one second. Here we have two and one. That's two seconds. Here we have one and zero, right? So maybe what I should do is I should take, it looks to me like the largest number and the smallest number. At least that's what I did here. Let's see if that will work for this one. Largest number and smallest number, well, we just have a four and a three. That's one second. I can do the same thing again. That's two seconds. That's three seconds. That's four seconds. Here, that's five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds. And then see, that to me, that would be eight, unless I did something wrong here. Fill up a hot cup. And let's just backtrack all the way here. Five, four, four. 
and this is cold, warm, and hot. So cold, warm, and hot. So cold and hot, okay, this would be four and three. Cold and hot, cold and warm. Uh, so I think we're always taking the largest ones. Maybe, maybe. Here we can pick any of them, so two and two. If we put a cold cup and a warm cup, a warm cup and a hot cup, one and two. Cold cup. So is it always taking the largest one? Every second we fill up a cold cup, one, four, two, because here it wouldn't be, this would be a cold cup and a warm cup. Proven that four is the minimum time, minimum number of seconds needed. If I sorted this and I made it one, four, or one, two, four, how many seconds would this take? If I was just going down, it's like three, one, that's one second, two, zero, that's two seconds, one, zero, that's three seconds, and four. Okay, if we did four, 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 five, that's one second. That's two seconds. That's three seconds. That's four seconds. That's five seconds. Six seconds. Seven seconds. I think it's always taking. I, I guess the, the, the trick here is knowing and this it might not even be something that I really need to keep track of. There's probably like a more clever way of doing this, but which numbers, which positions do I decide to decrease? Very interesting. Fill up a cold cup and a hot cup, fill up a cold cup and a warm cup. Five, four, four. Hmm. I'm trying to think through this and see what could be the best way of doing it. Two, one, two, five, four, four. And I, I definitely know I don't I don't feel like I can just be greedy because if I'm just greasy like if I'm just greasy greasy if I'm just greedy like greedy would just be feel like taking five seconds here four seconds here four seconds here that gives us what thirteen seconds so there's a better way of doing it but what is what is the algorithm for that why is it that like I like I might always want to be taking off the bigger numbers. But it's like knowing which ones are the biggest ones at any given time. Because this is four, four and three. The biggest ones here are four and four. And then here I can pick any two and two. But now I should do two and three. Then I can do uh, two and two. Here I can do any zero and zero. And then just zero. So it's always the two biggest ones. Okay. It's always the two biggest ones. How can I, and let me see if the constraints yield anything. Hmm, amount.i is less than 100 and the length is always three. I wonder if we can do like like what if I had an array here? No, but then I'd have two things at four. And that's not gonna work. Minimum number of seconds needed to fill up all the cups. So I know what I need to do, I think. 
And wait, if we go back to one, four, and two, the two biggest ones are four and two. See, but do I do three and one? Okay, that's one second. Here I can do, that's two seconds. That's three seconds and then four seconds. Okay, so that still works with that one. The fact that the fact that these numbers can only go up to 100, I feel like maybe I can use I can use a fixed size array of size 100 and use that to know what are the two biggest numbers. The only thing is these are not all distinct. Like if I have a 5, a 4 and a 4, I'm going to have the number 4 in like the same position. My dog is moving around in his bed, if you guys hear a little bit of movement in the background. A five and a four and a four. I mean, I almost think that maybe a heap could work, but like to continue, oh, maybe we just, hmm. Actually, what if we do have a heap? Okay, what if I, what if I put this into a heap, right? Imagine we have five, four, four, and somehow it's like, okay, we we DQ, it's like we DQ, we DQ the top two elements, which is five and four, and then we subtract one from both of those, and that, that could be one second, right? So we're left with what? We're left with four and three, and then we on cue four and three again. So it'd be something like uh, four, four, three. And right now we're at one second. Okay, now we DQ or we, we get the first, the top two, that's four and four. Okay, and that can be three and three. So now we input these, we queue these up, that's another second. Again, we do the same thing, three and three, that's two and two though. So now we're left with three, two and two, we add another second. I get the top two is three and two, subtract one from each, that leaves us with two and one. So now it'll look like this, two and one, this becomes a four. DQ the top two, that's two and two, subtract one, we're left with one and one, that's five seconds. DQ the top two, that's one and one, that becomes zero and zero, so now we're just left with one, zero, zero. That was another second. Now here we just do one. I guess I can keep doing that. I can keep doing this until the top one is not zero. Whenever the top one is just zero, then I'll just add whatever the last one is. That's how many seconds I'll need. That's some weird sort of like, sounds like a weird algorithm, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I think, I think we can uh, do something here. So let me see. JavaScript, uh, data structures, JS priority queue. I think it was like version 4.1 that we can use. If I try to use max priority queue, let's try this. Const bidders queue, let's just say amount. Uh, let's say this is cups. Okay, let's say const cups is new max priority queue. So that's fine. Okay, so let's go through cups for const a of amounts. We'll do cups dot q a. Okay. And now let's think about this. We could do something like while I think we have like a size here. Example, DQ is empty dot size, okay. Uh, while a dot size not equal to, or actually do we even need a dot size? I guess that's fine, it's always gonna be three. I think I, could, I, think I could just make this while true. And let me also, actually let me, I wanna, I actually want to print it out. Well, a dot size, let's do console.log cups.dq. 
I want to make sure that works. We should be we should be seeing separate objects for const a of amount. Oh, this should be on queue, right? Yeah, on queue. Well, a dot size, is this just returns the number of elements in the queue? Oh, this should be cups. Okay, so priority, priority, and then we get the element. The element is what I want. Okay, so let's do this. The same thing that we did before. While true, what is it we're going to do? We're going to say const cup one is, let's see, const cup one is going to be equal to cups.dq. Const cup two will be equal to cups.dq. Here we can say if cup two dot element is equal to zero, then we should just return uh, minimum, right? Because look what we got here. If the element is zero, that means we, you know, we only have one thing left. So here we can just return like minimum plus cup one dot element, is it? Yeah, elements is the actual number. The priority here doesn't really matter. Elements and elements. Let's also make sure that here we have let minimum equals zero. All right, so what do we do here? Uh, seconds, these are the amount of seconds return minimum. So I think what we should do here is just say, so we can do that. We should be able to do cups dot on queue. Uh, cup one dot element minus one and cups dot on Q cup two dot element minus one. Let me show you what I'm doing again, right? Let's take let's take an arbitrary one here, like five four four. Okay, five four four. What's gonna happen? Cup one and cup two are cups dq and cups dq. This is after we've on queued all of them into our max priority queue. So I'm gonna pull out five and four. All right, five and four, which means I'm going to remove these from here. And then I'm going to, I should, I need to increase this by one, minimum plus or equals one. And then what are we going to on queue back? We're going to on queue, because since we actually removed one from each one of these, we're going to on queue what, four and three, right? So in a max priority queue, it would look like this, four and three. And then we're back here. Now we're going to, again, DQ the top two. We're going to add another one to our second. So we're at, we're at two right now for minimum. And we're going to on queue three and three since we're subtracting one from each one of these. Then again, we pull out the top two, three and three. Minimum is now three. We on queue two and two. So max looks like this now. Okay, on queue the top two, three and two. We are going to on queue two and one, right? Two and one. Minimum is now four. On queue the top two, two and two. We're going to now on queue one and one minimum becomes one top two. We remove one and one. We're going to on queue zero and zero minimum is six. Now check this out. We're going to on queue. We're going to DQ the top one, which is one and DQ the second one. But if the second one is zero, that means you only have one thing left, which means from here we can just re return six plus the element of cup one. Right, because that element, that's however many seconds we'll need left. So if we just do one, we get seven. I feel like I feel like that could be a solution. I'm not sure if it's the best one, but I think it could work. Let's check it out. We get four and four, okay. Starting off with a hundred four millisecond solution. I mean let's see what we get. Let's keep going. Four seven five, four seven five, one hundred nineteen. Though I feel like this is running into a little bit of the uh, upper end here, because to run to run that last piece, you sometimes get a feeling of when things are taking too long. But let's run it and see what we get. Six point thirty six. I mean, this is like 
how do I say this? There have, there have been times like leak code solution times vary wildly, right, from one to the other. But I feel like if you're already under 10%, that almost certainly means that we're at the lower end of time complexity. Although I will say, I'm, I'm at least happy, if, even if this is not the fastest solution, I'm still happy that we were able to take advantage of a heap here because this sort of pattern does appear a lot also on medium questions. You know, we're starting to get into using like other sort of data structures, ones that we haven't really covered a lot in the streams or any of the other videos that I've posted. So at the very least, I'm happy with, you know, one that I came up with something and I was able to use a new data structure. Now, I'm very curious to see the discussion here. I hope that we will learn a lot. And look at that. It's a brain teaser. Necessary conditions, lower bound. So the res is greater than or equal to the max of A because each time one type can reduce at most one cup. So the final result is bigger or equal to max of A. This is the lower bound. The result is greater than the ceiling of sum of A divided by two because each time we can fill up to two cups so the final result is bigger or equal to the ceiling of the sum of a divided by two. Let's see, sufficient, uh, sufficient, con I'm not sure, uh, sufficient condition or own strategy is to really fill up two cups with different types of water. Each step we pick the two types with the most number of cups until there's only one kind, right? Lower bound is realizable, so it's proved at the minimum steps. So I want to see during the contest after trying out the greedy solution with priority queue and realizing it won't work, my brain was like, let's learn it from Lee, and here I am. Okay, this is good. So suppose we have one, three, five. The optimal strategy is always to fill two different cups as long as they're available. The first thing to notice is that one of the two cups will always be from the biggest stack. The other cup will come from the smallest and medium stack, depending upon which one is still available. In fact, there is no difference between the smallest and the medium stack because you can take either of them, exhaust it, and proceed to the remaining stack all the while also taking cups from the biggest stacks. So we can just distribute the smallest stack optimally between the medium and biggest stacks. In this example, 135, adding the smallest stack to the medium will result in zero and then three plus one, five, which doesn't affect the max. So the answer is max of A equals five. In this example, 344, four, distributing the smallest stack between the medium and large optimally 0, 4 plus 1, 4 plus 2. I'm not really sure what that means. So let me see another question here. We can only care about two largest elements and try to fill them one at a time, then dynamically find the largest two elements in the next loops, do the same thing until we fill the cups. Thank you guys up, folks, for making me less unhappy. Yeah, so here they're using sort. So I mean, this, while amount of two not equal to zero. Um, this is this is an interesting time complexity because like how many times do we have to run this for it to happen? There, there must be some correlation there. I haven't quite figured out, but this wild true thing, let's see, how many times will it happen for any given number? Whatever that thing is, and then here, I mean, this is just, we're, we're doing what, like a, a constant DQ and then also adding it, so it's almost like log n plus log n here. So it's going to be some factor n log n, right, for this whole operation here. By the way, if you hear raining, I'll let you know that I live in Florida. So at, at the time of this recording, we are all getting prepared for Hurricane Ian. But, you know, leak code, we got to keep it going strong. You know, that's leak code beats hurricane preparation. No, but I'm good though, I'm good. And I'm, I'm actually sort of away from the storm, so that's fine. All right, let's see if we can maybe do, okay, well, binary search, I think we can get to this one. We have, we have enough time. So this is literally just for us to do a binary search. There really isn't a better way for me to explain this other than the fact that you should learn how to do a binary search. The nice thing about binary search is when you have a set of numbers that are in ascending order, you can very quickly fill out or you can very quickly find a number just based on doing things in this binary search algorithm. The best way for me to explain it is think of a phone book, okay? Most humans, most people, if you ask them to look up a name in the phone book, do not start at index A and go from A all the way until they find the letter, right? If, if the last name starts with a P, 
you're not going to start at A and just flip each individual page until you get to index P, right? Normally what you do is you open up the phone book in a random location. If it's if the last name where you opened up is like D, for example, you know you need to go higher. You need to search now in this space from E through Z. And then let's say the next one you open is like R, for example. Okay, you search too high. R is greater than P. So now you need to look up from R to uh, whatever's that before. Or we, we have to look up from E to whatever is before R, which is Q, right? From E to Q. So in this way, you're always removing like a large portion of the phone book, the problem space, every single time you're searching for something. So that, that's the nice thing about that's the nice thing about doing a binary search. And there's really just a very popular way of doing it. And we'll do that now, right? So we're gonna this is what we're gonna do. We're going to create a couple variables low is zero. And high is going to be nums dot length minus one. And then I'll just set my mid here to nothing yet, because that's what we're going to figure out in the next piece. This is just saying like we have the beginning of the phone book index a and we also have the ending of the phone book index z. And now the mid is like the action of you opening up your the phone book to a, a random location. That's what mid in this case is. Although in this case, it's literally the middle of the phone book. It's not very random. It's literally the middle. Here we can say while low is less than or equal to high, the midpoint will be equal to math dot for floor of low plus high. And let me put some parentheses here, low plus high divided by two. Here we can say if nums of mid is equal to target, then we can just return mid, which is the the index that we want, right? And just like we said before, if nums of mid is greater than target, that means we need to reduce that means we went too high, right? So now we need to sort of go lower. So that means that we can set our high now to equal mid minus one or rather, yeah, our high should equal to mid minus one. Right? Else if nums of mid is less than target, then our low should be equal to mid plus one. And at the end, if we don't find anything, then we just return negative one. This algorithm runs in log n time complexity with a constant space complexity. It's an extremely popular algorithm that you, we will see time and time again in all types of questions, easy, hard, medium, whatever. I honestly recommend you just maybe look up a video, learn how to do it, memorize it because it will help you. I have seen this algorithm even used in work. You know, there's a, there's a big argument for, you know, if I learn lead code, am I going to be you know, doing binary searches at work? Am I going to be having to invert binary trees? Am I going to have to sort, you know, by hand? Most often, no, but these patterns do show up at work. And I've seen services that we run on the cloud. I'm getting more into software engineering territory here, but, you know, we have services that we run on our cloud infrastructure. I've seen some of these services have marked improvement in performance because of changes that we've made using some of the algorithms that I've learned here on LeetCode. So very, very cool stuff. You should learn this and we'll take this as a freebie for this video, but great, great question here. Definitely adding this to my list. Nice. So we'll take it from there. This is going to be the end of this video and I hope to see you guys soon. Well, you will, there's going to be another video coming out tomorrow. I'm glad we've at least made it through two questions. Again, I'm, I'm reducing, you can also, you know, if you've been following me since day zero, take this time as a break too, in the sense that you can still watch the half an hour videos, you can still make progress toward your goals, you can still practice, but think of it as just a little time for yourself. I'm giving you half an hour back if you've been watching my daily one hour streams. So it's a nice little break for everyone. I get to go on vacation, you get to do shorter videos, but you're still getting towards your goal. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching the videos. And I will see you all soon when I get back to the live streaming. Stay safe, everyone, and happy coding.